If you're not a person of determination, you would never even think of these things. But grateful that we live in a city where they don't take things for granted and actually provide the accessibility for everyone. We're good, we're ready. Perfect, so my name's Kevin Paul, a two-time gold, one-time silver Paralympic medalist in swimming, and also on that side of that as well, really passionate and really involved when it comes to people of determination in making sure that we're providing the opportunities, the access, and also things like sport, and just feel like you are a valuable member of the community. When I was born, I was born with something called Poland syndrome. If you look at me, and if you hear that I'm a Paralympic champion, you go, he's not in a wheelchair, He's got all his arms, well, what's going on here? And uh, with that is I'm basically missing all the pectoral muscles. And the most visible thing that you'll be able to see when you speak to me or see me out in the open is the hands. And having been born, doctors told my parents, congratulations, you have a son, uh, but there's something different about him. So protect him, wrap him in cotton wool. My parents didn't listen to the doctors at all. And they literally just threw me into every activity from a young age. We did everything. So rugby, there was water polo that I did it on a national level in South Africa as well. Surf life saving and winning gold medals at national championships. So all these things were being done by a kid who doctor said wouldn't be able to do it. And not because I'm special, but specifically because of the way that my parents brought me up. You might have to work harder, but you're gonna get there and you're gonna do better than anyone else as well. So it was that mindset that really just set me up for life. And that's what then took me through to 2008, which is really where my life changed. So I was 16 years old at the time. It was the 8th of September, 2008. Dive into the pool, world record gold medal. And it was literally in that one minute, my life changed. So my world just expanded from this small town guy doing all these sports to all of a sudden, wow, now everyone's looking at me. So in 2016, 8th of September in Rio, managed to get the gold medal back for myself. And it was almost just like a, I'm gonna tick the box, I've done that. And then it was now moving into the next chapter. Oh, How are you doing, Kev? You well? I've been in Dubai for the last eight years now. I was literally on a plane a week after that race in Rio, straight to Dubai, and where I've been involved with the sports and wellness industry for the last eight years. Yeah. So, um, that's basically my little summary in a nutshell. So we're outside of our gymnastics unit here in JVC. This is one of the sports that we provide at Wellfoot. Our program here is headed up by an ex-Olympic champion. So what we've made sure of as well is that we're providing the opportunities to kids of determination. Since being in Dubai, a real passion has been that as people of determination, how is it that we can make sure that people have access, are enabled, and just get seen as being people who are part of the community and can take an active role in being part of that community. So Touch Dubai is a community. Inclusion, inclusivity, that's what they preach and what they're doing day in, day out. And what we've organized with them is, is that on a weekly basis, we provide free sports or activities for these families to attend. So we have up to about 30 families sometimes come just to give these kids the opportunity to feel like they're part of something more uh, in Dubai. Have a good time. So all of you, if you work very hard today. We started Touch three years ago. I had wanted to start an organization, a business that empowers. The vision for Touch was always the pillars of mentorship equal representation, as well as a big part of it, which is our local and global outreach programs. My daughter comes home from this, she loves it. She loves coming to it, it's energizing, it's, it's positive, it's exciting, and she's surrounded, surrounded with great people. I mean, Dubai keeps doing this, and it's just a great city for us. This community is not just focusing on the kids, but that their parents as well, they come here and they feel like there is support. The heart of touch means so much to us because um, with Jean, uh, the kids just love her and it's made a great, great difference to her fitness as well. It's beautiful to be able to see you guys coming back yet week in, week out and we obviously see what you've been doing. It's been a phenomenal way to connect with other parents in the community but also to bring Ruby's confidence up, you know, even further and allow her to almost use the sports as a, as a form of therapy. You know? Exactly, and I know that she's also obviously very involved with gymnastics, so she's been working with Sarah at Welford, I believe, yes. and part of the Special Olympics. So how's that been as well? Because it obviously all ties together as pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, so to put it together. I would like to say a heartfelt thank you to the Touch community and to all the volunteers that, you know, are involved in it because that was also part of her training. And, you know, Ruby, 
achieved a gold, a silver, and a bronze at the Berlin Special Olympics. And I do believe a lot of that was possible because of the support. Right, Manir, so if you can just tell me what have been the biggest differences or challenges that you've experienced post uh, your stroke and now being in a wheelchair? It's a big challenge, actually, because uh, of the left side of my button. Yeah, almost did. Obviously here today we're seeing you using one of the, the RTA uh, Dubai taxis. How has that helped you to, in being able to be independent and being able to get to places uh, if you want to? See, this, this idea is very helpful. I can go anywhere there was a taxi. Exactly, and you can make use of the accessibility on that side. And again, from my side, I just want to say thank you for being an inspiration to us, even to the kids here today as well. I think every time they see you, they smile, they're excited, they're happy. And I just wish you I love all the them. best. I love them also. I love the kids. Thank you. Have a good day. Same to you. Thank you. Yeah. She's my friend. Oh, there's your favorite Elif, eh? She <laughs> love you. I love you. I love you. We finished off the session now at CrossFit for Touch, and now we're moving on to another attraction here in Dubai. We are at Aventura Park, and what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be meeting Fatima and the triplets, who we've just seen at the Touch event, and we're going to be going through the park over here, meeting the team, hearing about what's going on over here, and take you guys through it. Excited? We're in um, Mushraf National Park in Dubai, which is the largest national park in the UAE. And we are in Aventura Parks, which is located inside. So this is our adventure park side, uh, where we do a big adventure ropes course. Aside from the location, um, being outdoors and in the greenery and in the forest, we also try to be as inclusive as possible uh, for this kind of installation. Frank, so you've touched on the park as inclusive. You also said that your staff have undergone training to become certified. As we walked through, we saw the big sign saying CAC certified. What does that stand for? Yeah, so CAC uh, stands for Certified Autism Center. All it basically entails is that all our staff need to be trained, our customer facing staff need to be trained in sensory awareness and autism and all the other uh, requirements that we may have to to accommodate people especially on the autism spectrum and other neurodivergency. Man if you think about it just being able to come out spend some time in nature be able to take part in an attraction like this where it's not only the the, the fun activities that they're getting to do but it's if you just have a look over here you've got the guides who are all certified knowing that you can come to a park like this and every single one of your kids is gonna be able to have fun no matter what type of disability that they have or where it is that they are on the spectrum when it comes to autism. We know that the team is gonna be able to take care of it and the activities are gonna be accessible as well. We watch the kids on the, on, the, on the zip lines and on all these little adventure courses and your staff are there. They're helping the kids and create that environment where the child feels safe, the parents feel safe and they can just make a day out of it. So from my side at least to you guys, I thank you for what it is that you guys have been place. But I also understand that you guys are obviously looking towards the future yeah. and trying to not just say, okay, cool, we've ticked the box, but you want to improve the facilities, you want to improve the accessibility moving forward as well, if I'm not mistaken. We're going to be looking at the installations a little bit to improve uh, the access. So it's for people with mobility issues or with limb deficiencies to be a bit easier for them to navigate so we can get more people to experience the adventure park. You know, and um, a few other things to help maybe visually or hearing impaired, wherever we can help and whatever is possible for us. This is the right thing to do at the end of the day and uh, we're just trying to live our value. Exactly, and I personally being here today, I can feel that you guys aren't just ticking a box, you're living your values and the staff are they're really doing a good job at it as well. Next, we're off to Jumeirah 2 Beach to spend time with Brett and his parents. Dubai's beaches are thoughtfully designed for inclusivity providing essential services and seamless access to the water and to the beach for all people of determination. Ready to swim today? Yes. Nice. How are you doing? Good to see you again. Hello. Give us a smile. Smile. 
Okay, so yeah, when you guys come here, you've got the lifeguards, they assist you, yeah. get him onto the water wheelchair, bring him down into the water. Yeah. Yes. Nice. And you enjoy being in the water, huh? So really yeah. love it, yes. But I hear you also swim without it as well, without the wheelchair. You'll go swim by yourself as well? Yeah, yeah. Huh? We show that as well. Nice, man. So, ready? Yeah. You want to go for a swim? Yeah. Yes. There we go. Yeah. So Sorted. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Good good here. Hi, good, good. How are you? Can you? How are you? Nice. You ready there? Grab on there. Put your leg on. Get 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 on. Nice, I'll chuck it off the list. Wow, your glasses. You want to give me a wave? No. Hey guys, did you have a good day at the beach? We yes. had a great day we at the a great beach. Day. Thank you for having me at the world. Oh, thank you guys, appreciate it. And we'll see you all soon, Brett. Bye. Bye, we'll see you soon. High five, Brett. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. I was just thinking, with the amount of accessibility that we have here, you wouldn't have had this much back when you were growing up. So. No, growing up or traveling to all the places that we used to go to for competitions, be it Paralympic Games or anything, never would you see so much in one place in terms of accessibility. And now you live in a city where everything is accessible. So it doesn't really matter what ability or disability you're born with, you are gonna have access to the beach, you are gonna have access to the museums, the attractions, the malls, the parks, you absolutely don't have to everything. Worry. Exactly, no. I think we're really, really fortunate. I'm very excited. <laughs>